Hello, this is Sarah with Posh Pooch Designs, and today's video I'm going to be showing you how to crochet this washcloth. It's a small washcloth, measures about three and a half by three and a half. It's the perfect size washcloth to maybe throw in your gym bag or your diaper bag or to wash your face with. It's just a small washcloth made out of cotton and really quick to whip a bunch of these up. You can also make a bunch in a set and give them to someone for a gift, for a wedding, for a baby, just for a birthday present, whatever. They're just great little gifts and they're also a really neat way to use up a lot of your leftover yarn scraps. What you're going to need to make these washcloths is some sort of cotton. And these, uh, these are all made out of sugar and cream or peaches and cream style cottons. But you can also use the I Love This Cotton. You can use any cotton that you want. It doesn't take very much. I'm going to be using this plain solid teal cotton for our demonstration. And then I'm also going to use this cream just to trim the edges so that you can see that a little bit better. We're going to be stitching today with our H hook. You're also going to need a needle for weaving in your ends and a pair of scissors for cutting. Now this is a free pattern on my blog. It's just called the square washcloth crochet pattern. And it's on the same blog as the video we did the other day with the round facial washcloths. And so you can find both those patterns on the same blog. All right, let's go ahead and get started making our washcloth. We're going to begin with a slip knot. And then we're going to chain 13 chains. Now remember, <clears throat> your initial chain should be a little bit looser or you'll get puckering on an end and you don't want one end to be shorter than the other. So make sure you stitch a little bit loose for these uh, beginning 13 chains. So I chained my 13 chains and we're going to begin in the second chain from the hook. This is our first chain and this is our second and we're going to place a single crochet in this second chain from the hook. Go in the chain and pull up a loop. There are two loops on your hook. Yarn over and go through both those loops. Now the next stitch we're going to do is a double crochet. So we're going to yarn over our hook, go in the next chain and pull up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, Go through the first two and yarn over, go through the second two. And the way this pattern will work is we're going to do single, double, single, double, single, double, all the way across our chain. And that's how we get this little bit of a texture here. Gives us just a little bit to scrub with. All right, so our next chain, we're going to do a single crochet. Then in our next chain, we're going to do a double crochet. And we'll repeat this all the way across our row. Single, double. single, double, single, some more yarn out here, <laughs> double, single, and double. And you should end with a double crochet at the end of your first row. We started with a single, 
single double, single double, all the way across, and we end with a double crochet. We're going to chain one and then turn our work. And the next row will begin with a single. You need to always end with a double crochet because when we turn, we chain one and we start with a single crochet. And this is the way every row will be stitched. And we're going to stitch, let me look at my notes here, for 13 rows. So we did our chain and then our first row. So for our second row, we're going to begin with a single crochet in the double crochet. And this is very important that you put your single crochets in the top of a double crochet. And then we're going to double crochet in the top of the single crochet. It needs to alternate. Placing our last stitch was a double crochet, so we stitched a single. Our next stitch was a single, so we stitched a double. And we'll do that again, similar to our, our last row, making sure that we place the single crochets in the double crochets and the double crochets in the single crochets. And that's how the texture, as I spoke of a few seconds ago, works because we're always double crocheting in a single and single crocheting <clears throat> in a double. And on each row, you should begin with a single crochet and you should end with a double crochet. There's my last double crochet chain one and turn and you can see how it makes those little ridges <clears throat> my throat's a little dry today sorry you can see how it makes those little ridges and those little ridges give you the little bumps and the, and the neat thing about this pattern is there is no front and back the the washcloth works on the front and the back side just perfectly let me set that down for a second and grab this one again We're going to be stitching for 13 rows in the front and here's that was the back here's the front and we're going to continue as we did we're going to turn we're going to do double crochet excuse me we're going to turn and chain one and then we'll single crochet double single double single double all the way across and on a double crochet chain one and turn and we'll do that on every row for 13 rows so I ended on a double crochet, I chained one, <clears throat> and now I'm going to single crochet in that double crochet, double crochet in the single crochet. And this will be exactly the same. On every row, alternating singles and doubles starting with the single crochet and ending with the double crochet. More yarn out here. And I'm ending with a double crochet on this row. Every row ends on a double crochet and every row begins on a single crochet. So we chain one and turn and single crochet. <clears throat> and that's the way we'll do. We've got our first three rows done and now we need to do 10 more rows for a total of 13 rows alternating double and single for 13 rows. I stitched my 13 rows and I'm going to be changing colors but you don't have to. On these three I did not change colors. I kept them all the same. I'm changing colors just so that you can see um, what it looks like up next to the stitches. 
because it can be a little complicated on the edges where there isn't rows. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my yarn. And then I'm going to add my new color in. There we go. And I'm going to chain one. Snug that all down. All right. So what we're going to do next is we're going to place a row of single crochet all the way around the washcloth. And then we're going to place three single crochets in each of the corners. And by doing that, it helps it ease around the corner nice and neatly. All right, so we're going to start first by going down this edge. And it can be difficult to know where to put your stitches. And what I try to do is rather than going in one of the holes between the stitches, I try to go in the stitches themselves. And you're going to have to kind of eyeball it, just making sure you don't leave too much space. When you're doing a double crochet edge, you're going to uh, go in those stitches themselves. When you're doing a single, same thing with the single crochet. Try to go in the stitches, not the holes. So I'm going to try to go in that stitch at the end of each row not in the holes. And sometimes you may have to put one in a hole if there just isn't anywhere to put it. But um, if you put it in the holes all the way around, you end up with like big gaping holes and that doesn't look pretty. And like this one's a little tight, so I'm having to really push hard. But you can see I'm putting it in the stitches, not the holes in between the stitches. And this might take a little bit longer to find the spots, but you'll end up with a much neater washcloth. Especially if you're going to give this as a gift, you want it to be as neat and tidy as you can possibly get it. And of course, you only have to do these on the two ends because the other ends we have stitches to stitch in. Let's see, I'm going to go right in there. And I need to pull that stitch just a little tighter. Sometimes when you're working with cotton, it can gape on you because it doesn't have the stretch that acrylic yarn has. All right, so there I had to go in that hole. All right, so now I'm at the corner and I want to place three single crochets in that same corner. And this just helps the trim ease around the edge of your washcloth. We stitched down this edge, we put three single crochets, and now we're going to go across this edge. And this is where we started with our chain. So we, we can just put one stitch in each of those chains across. So I went ahead and stitched the stitches down the chain and I put the three single crochets in the corner. And now we're gonna work down this other edge where we're on the edges of the rows, not the tops. And it's the same thing, we're gonna go in stitches not holes. And like here I am going in a hole because there just isn't anywhere to put it, but don't do it every time. You may have to, like I said, you may have to every now and then, but try to get it in the stitches. You'll just get a much neater appearance with your washcloth if you can get in those stitches. And sometimes you got to push a little like that. There we go. <clears throat> get in there. <laughs> That one's a little tight. We're going to make it work. There we go. Get in there. That one I have to put in a little bit of a hole. All right. So we're back to the corner. We're going to place three single crochets. One. This is two. 
and there's three. So we've done three sides, making sure we put three single crochets in each of the corners. And now I'm going to stitch back across here and join to that first single crochet. Now we're going to have to put three single crochets in our last corner as well. And this is easy. This last part of it is super easy because I can just put a single crochet in each stitch because that's the top of our washcloth. Need a little more there. Oops, there we go. All right, one more stitch and I'm in the corner. And so I'm going to make two more single crochets. Strings need to be weaved in. And then I'm going to join to that first single crochet. And I'm going to cut my yarn. I'm going to go from behind, grab that loop and pull it to the back. There we go. Makes the front just a little bit tidier there. So there's the front of our washcloth all finished up. And now we need to take a few minutes and weave in these ends. <clears throat> so we'll just thread that onto our needle. And we'll just go behind. Going through a few stitches. Turn it and then go back the other way and make sure, like this one I changed color, so I want to make sure I don't weave in the wrong color into the like the white into the blue. So I'm going to go ahead and finish tidying up the washcloth. Got to weave in these last two ends. So here's our washcloth. I tidied up the back and so now you can see that it pretty much has a doesn't really have a front or a back. I mean you can tell by the stitches but it can be used either way. Something fun to do with these if you're going to give them as a gift is just to roll it up and tie a piece of string around it. There you go. And give it like that. Now these are a lot of fun. If you're going to put together like say a wedding basket or you want to put his and hers or you want to give it as a, a baby shower gift, you can put several of them together and they make really great little gifts. And the thing about a washcloth is the more it's washed, the better it works because it starts activating all those um, uh, cotton fibers in there to be more absorbent. And so here's the other three that we made that I made. These are all in colors, and then here's this one. So that's our little square washcloth. And one other note about this, if you want to make it bigger, make sure you add two chains at a time in order for it to end, because you need to add in increments of two. But you can make this using the same technique as big as you want. Mm -hmm. 